The bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Drifting along, singing a song under a Western From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star for today is the screen's hard-riding new Western singing star, Jimmy Wakely, in a story of the West prepared especially for him. My name is Cottonseed Clark, and here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Your old-time Western cowboy led a pretty active sort of life at that, riding fence, rounding up strays, roping and branding cattle. All the miscellaneous chores necessary to keep a big cattle spread functioning called for a lot of energy. No wonder cowpunchers demanded good food and got it. Well, the men of today like good food, too. And that's one reason the bakers of Weber's Bread are so very popular. Because Weber's Bread is good food. Good bread. Weber's Bread makes good toast for breakfast, good sandwiches for lunch, and is especially good served with evening meals. It's an all-purpose bread that blends well with other foods. When the modern housewife serves Weber's bread, she knows that her men folks won't go away hungry because Weber's bread is really good bread. Buy a loaf tomorrow. Guest star time today is a special event for us all-star Western theater folks, for it's time to welcome a young fellow that's made a mighty big mark for himself in Western pictures. But the same young fellow that we used to play marbles with and spin tops and swipe watermelons and go to prayer meeting with. Friends and neighbors, the screen's great new singing cowboy star, Jimmy Wakely, in a Western musical drama written especially for him entitled Rose of San Antone. Busting in here that way. I just come from the sheriff's office. They they found old man Snyder's body. Well, so what? There's talk going around, Gorman, that you was the only one that had reason to kill him. Hmm. That ain't so good. The old man Martin told the sheriff that the two of you was in an argument the day before you disappeared and that you threatened to kill him. That old fool is always talking out of turn. I'd to plug him, too. Better take my advice and saddle up and clear out of here, Gorman. Oh, that would be a sure way to have every sheriff in the country on my trail. It's better than hanging. You'd better clear out. Did anybody see you riding this way? No, I rode out of town to the east and cut across the hills. Good. For once, you use your head. What's that got to do with it? Plenty. I want you to take the same way back. Mosey into the sheriff's office and tell the sheriff you found this roll of bills in the bunkhouse at Snyder's Ranch. Say, right next to your bunk. There's a couple of hundred in this roll. What's the idea? You know that new hand that's working at Snyder's place? Yeah. Where's his bunk? It's, it's right next to mine. <laughs> now you're getting smart. You mean frame the kid? You're learning fast, Ross. Oh, but Gorman, that kid wouldn't have a chance. He's a stranger here. You know, sometimes I think you got possibilities of having a mind of your own. Is uh, this some of the money you took off of old man Snyder? That's it. And if you'll handle this job careful like, I'll give you a cut of what's left. That's a deal. I'll spill enough talk about that kid that he won't have a dog's chance. My name is Brennan. Jim Brennan. To most folks, I'm what you'd call a wanderer. I never stay in one place very long. You see, I have to keep on the move. I'm a hunted man, and if the law ever catches up with me, I reckon it'd be the end of the trail for Jim Brennan. If I was really a criminal, I reckon I'd be deserving of all this, but I'm not. I never did know exactly what happened, except that I was framed and charged with killing old man Tom Snyder, owner of the Bar S Ranch at Scottville, Nevada. 
Snyder was a mighty big man in state politics and his brother was a prominent attorney. It was his brother that swore to spend his life avenging Snyder's death. I've been on the go dodging the law from state to state ever since. That was 10 years ago. I was just a punk 18 year old kid. I'll never forget the day I escaped and left town with a posse in hot pursuit. Well, old boy, I reckon we lost him. Guess we can take it easy for a while. Well, I was scared, and I was mad, too. I thought to myself that as long as I had to put a lot of miles between me and Scottville, that I'd head for Texas. I'd heard a lot about the Lone Star State, and believe me, when I rode into San Antonio, I found most everything as I'd pictured it. And I wasn't long in getting a job punching cattle at the Circle B Ranch. How do you like it here after two weeks? Well, Betty, a job's a job, but knowing you has helped a lot. I hope you mean that. In a way, I'd like to. Or it means uh, I'd like for it to mean more, but... But what? But nothing. I'd rather not talk about it. You're about the strangest person I've ever known. You won't talk about yourself, and all we know is that your name is Bob Edwards. I'm not much on talking, Betty. Then I'll change the subject. How would you like to ride into town tonight? And go dancing? No, I'd just like to kind of wander around town. I want to see the Alamo. All right, it'd be fun. But I warn you, the Alamo is a romantic spot. I reckon that's a good chance to take. Well, you've seen the Alamo under a full moon. Kind of nice, isn't it? Very. You know, a great battle was fought right here. And now it's the most peaceful-looking spot I've ever seen. There's a path leading all the way around it. And let's see it all. I wish you wouldn't talk about leaving San Antonio. I wish I wouldn't, too, but I do. All right, go ahead and act strange. Say, look at that. Now, that's for you. It's against the law to pick these flowers. For a rose as pretty as this and a girl as pretty as you, I'd go to jail. Here you are. Jim. Yes? You know, I... I like you a lot. I wish you didn't, but I'm glad you do. I don't understand you at all. Maybe you'll understand this. Hello, Joe. When would you get in from Austin? Last night. Uh, where were you? Betty and I rode into town. You uh, kind of like her, don't you? Yeah, I do, but say, what's going on at the Capitol? Oh, not much. Uh, I did notice in the state paper that the Rangers have been notified to look out for some cowboy that's wanted for murder up in Nevada. Well, uh, have they found him? No, but they did give a pretty good description of him. That's right. Yeah. His real name is uh, Brennan, Jim Brennan. Kill some big ranching politician, they claim. Yeah? I hadn't heard about it. You know, if it was me and I was down in this part of the country, I'd move on. Why? Well, the paper said he was last seen in San Marcos, heading south. Frankly, I feel sorry for the guy. I just got an idea he isn't as bad as they say he is. Much obliged to you, Joe. Here's an extra two weeks' pay. If you need anything else, Bob, let me know. Joe, I didn't kill that man. I promise you I'm telling you the truth. And I promise you I believe it. Don't say anything about this to Betty, will you? I understand, and good luck to you, Bob. Thanks. Deep within my heart lies a melody a song of old San Antonio, where in dreams I live with a memory beneath the stars all along. It was there. I found 
beside the Alamo. Enchantment strange has the blue up above a moon that passed that only she would know. Still hears my broken song of love. Well, I reckon San Antonio was one place I'll never forget, especially her. I turned mole horse west and headed towards the plains country, working my way as I traveled. I'd heard a lot about those West Texas plains how much bigger the moon was, how brighter the stars. When I rode into Amarillo, it was winter, and I found nothing but cold sands and winds. Yes, sir, that wind seemed like it was blowing 90 miles an hour. There was nothing between me and the North Pole but a barbed wire fence, and it was tore down. But it wasn't long until I was to realize the true beauty of this vast country with the big plains. I'll never forget that one night when I was punching for the Cross X Ranch, a bunch of us were gathered around a big open fence. You know, this is the kind of Texas night that I wish would last forever. Yeah, that's just a feeling I got. You can count me in on that. Uh, uh, reminds me of the night that I put a 45 slug right through old Joaquin Marietti, the, the famous bandit. Oh, oh, there there you go. Go. Well, well, it was about 30 years ago, I reckon, out in California. Uh, thank you. I had spent three months trailing old Marietti. Then one night, uh, just about such a night as this, I rode, uh, uh, rode right up and went around the campfire, just about such a fire as this in here, too. Well, sir, uh, I sneaked right up behind him and not wanting to take unfair advantage of him, uh, I said, uh, uh, Walkie, uh, uh, I always call him Walkie for short. I said, Walkie, your time is up. Reach for the sun. Now, just a minute, Wendy. Huh? He'd have a hard time reaching for the sun at night. Remember, this story is all about the night. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes, so it was. Well, uh, I remember now. I said, Walkie. Uh, I always called him Walkie for short. I, I said, Walkie, reach for the moon. Well, he wheeled around, and we both reached for our guns at the same time. A split second later, he lay at my feet, mortally wounded. Or wounded. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just a minute, Wendy. How long ago did you say this happened? Well, it, it must have been uh, 30 years ago, I guess. Did you know that Joaquin Murrieta had been dead for 90 years? What? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. You know, I thought he was a mite slow on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can always depend on old Wendy to stir up a breeze. You bet sure. you can. You know, men, you can have your city lights and your waves, but... I'd be content to spend the rest of my life just a lying here on my back of looking up there, a listening to that fire popping and a drinking black coffee 50 miles from any town. You guys were singing a song about that a night or two ago at the bunkhouse, Shorty. What was it? Oh, you mean this one. You hand me that guitar. Come on, boys. Let's sing it for him. I want to drink my java from an old tin can while the moon goes riding high. I want to hear the call of the whippoorwill, I want to hear that coyote cry. I want to feel my saddle horse between my legs, riding him out on the range. Just to kick him in the side, make him show his stepping pride, out on the Texas plain. Each night in my dreams, somehow it seems I'm back where I belong. Just a country hick, way back in the sticks, back where I belong. Oh, the city lights and the city ways are driving me insane. Oh, I want to go back, oh, won't you please take me back, back to the Texas plain. I want to drink my java from an old tin can while the moon goes riding high. I want to hear the call of the whippoorwill, I want to hear that coyote cry. I want to feel the saddle horse between my legs, riding him out on the range. Just to kick him in the side, make him show his stepping pride, out on the Texas plain. Like most every place else that I got to like, and I had to leave. I just didn't feel comfortable staying long enough for anybody to get to know me too well. So I headed out towards Alpine in the Davis Mountains for the big roundup. It was as beautiful a country as you'd ever hope to see. 
Man, you know, I'm hungry enough to eat a cow, raw. That sagebrush in bloom there looks good enough for me to eat. It may look good enough to eat, but don't go trying any of it. <laughs> Say, it's nice you got here in time for the roundup, Barton. I'm glad I was here, too. I was talking to you. Your name is Barton, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear you. Yes, so you know, if this country stayed like this a year round, it'd spoil everybody. It'd spoil me already. To some folks there's a spot that lives forever Deep down within their fondest memory Though I have been a roamer, I have never Found any place where I would rather be when it's roundup time in Texas And the bloom is on the sage Then I long to be in Texas Back riding on the rain Just to smell the bacon frying When it's sizzling in the pan Hear the breakfast horn in the early morn Drinking coffee from a can Just a riding, rockin', roping Poundin' leather all day long Just a swayin', sweatin', swearin' Listen to a cowhand song How it beckons and I reckon I would work for any way Just to be again, to be free again When the bloom is on the sage Years came and went At times I thought to give myself up and Always wondering somewhere, anywhere but for some reason, I stayed in Texas. I felt safe there. Then I'm, when I'd get in the mood to let my thoughts wander, they'd take me back to San Antonio and to Betty. Many times I thought I'd chuck it all and go back there and settle down until I was caught. But if she was waiting for me and would have me after I told my story, it still wouldn't be fair to her. Well, 10 years passed and I couldn't carry on any longer, I thought to myself. At least until I got Betty out of my mind. So I turned my horse toward the Circle B Ranch. And turned him back. Hello, Joe. Remember me? No, I don't believe I... Well, you're Bob. Uh, Bob Edwards. That's right. How are you? Fine. I hardly knew you. You've aged a lot. Well, they say a man grows older with the years. I'm still a kid at heart, though. You know, I've often wondered about you, Bob. If they ever caught up with you. I reckon I've been lucky. A couple of days after you left, the rangers came calling. Then they made pretty regular visits for the next couple of years. Thinking I'd come back, huh? Yeah. And uh, so did I, Bob. For some reason or other, I figured you'd give in and come back to see, uh, see the Alamo again. How is she? Fine. Uh, you know, uh, we're getting married next spring. I didn't know, Joe. I'm sorry I happened by. I'll be going along. Well, uh, you don't have to. It's best I do. She still loves you. She told me so when she promised to marry me. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry too, Bob. But if it'd make her happy, I'd step aside in a minute. I've met a lot of right guys in my time, but I'm putting you at the head of the class for keeps, Joe. Then, uh, you're gonna stay? You don't think I'm that sort of a friend, do you? It might be better if you did. Nope. You couldn't hogtie me here and make me stay. Well, so long, Joe. I'll never forget you. You won't change your mind. I've got a lot of willpower, and right now I'm using most of it. I hope you'll both be the happiest two people in the world. Good luck to you, Joe. Same to you, Bob. And don't tell her I was here, will you? If you say so, and lots of luck to you. So long. So long. Well, I guess you know how I felt. As I rode away, I thought I'd go into San Antonio City and get a few supplies that I needed and put up for the night. I got a room and got myself cleaned up and decided to take a walk out in the fresh air. I reckon that was a mistake. 
because before I knew it, I was strolling down by the Alamo. I suppose I'm a sentimental cuss, but I figured it wouldn't hurt anything or anybody but me, and soon I found myself right where we had stood that night. A lot of thoughts went through my mind of what could have been. I lived my entire life all over again as I stood there in the moonlight. Then suddenly I heard a voice. Betty, why did you come here? Oh, I knew you'd be here. Well, it's nice seeing you. Joe told me. I thought maybe I'd find you here for some reason. Oh, Bob, I've missed you so much. Now, just a minute, Betty. You've got the wrong slant on things. What? What do you mean? You see, I'm... I'm waiting on a girl to meet me here. I've got a date. You... You couldn't. Not here. Why, sure. And you ought to see her. Good looking and a lot of class. How, how could you do such a thing? Oh, now look, Betty. I hope you're not thinking about that silly meeting you and me had here one night. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're the sweetest rose. And Texas, and you belong to me. You've got me riding O's and X's in my book of them sing about the one rose and the rose of San Antonio, but they could never paint you in a picture or a song. You're the sweetest rose in Texas. I felt mighty bad deceiving Betty like I did. On the other hand, I felt mighty good about it. Maybe it helped to make for a lot of happiness between Joe and her. Well, they say time heals everything, and believe me, I'm hoping it'll do something for me. Because there's a mighty big hole in my heart. So I reckon there's nothing for me to do but keep a-wandering and take my chances on being caught. Maybe someday they'll give up. You know, I wonder if they've forgotten me up there in Scottville. You know, George, I think a lot about that young Brennan kid that cleared out of the country about ten years ago when he got the blame for killing old man Snyder. Yeah, I've wondered about him myself. You know, if old Charlie Ross hadn't got shot and confessed that Gorman did the job two years before, I bet that Snyder's brother at the state capitol would have caught him by now. He swore he'd get him. Yeah, it's too bad that kid's never showing up in these parts. I wonder if he knows he's not a hunted man anymore. For that moonlit pass by the Alamo and rose my rose of San Antonio. Thank you, Jimmy Wakely, for your appearance on your all-star Western Theater. Friends and neighbors, our guest star will return in a few moments. The boss of a cattle outfit had to have a lot of understanding. He was responsible for the herd getting to market in prime condition, and he had to know both human beings and animals pretty well in order to make them work together. 
He saw that the men took care of their horses and the steers, and he took care of the men, made certain that their working conditions were just right and that they had plenty of good food. Modern mothers and housewives know the value of good food, too. That's why so many Southern California families use Weber's bread, because today's housewife knows that Weber's bread is well-mixed and well-baked, that its firm, even texture and delicious flavor add extra enjoyment to every meal. Weber's bread stays fresh longer, too. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread next time you go shopping and see if you, too, don't agree that Weber's bread is really good bread. And now, here is Foy Willing with today's guest star, Jimmy Wakely. Jimmy, uh... Since you're among home folks, I reckon there's no need for us to tell you how much we've enjoyed keeping company with you today. Well, it's been good being with all of you, as well as the folks here in the Western Theater audience and on the air. I'm going to make the All-Star Western Theater my stomping ground every time I'm allowed on the premises. Then it'll be right off, Jimmy. And now, since I've done enough singing chores for today, how about you and the writers of Purple Sage, huh? Jimmy, here is a song that kind of fits the theme of our story today. It's a little heart song, and no, it's a cowboy song called... Living alone, singing a song under a western moon. From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star western theater. A V.M. Bear production starring America's great western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today has been Monogram Pictures' great new singing cowboy, Jimmy Wakely whose next monogram release is Song of the Sierras. My name is Cottonseed Clark. The Riders of the Purple Sage may soon be seen in Republic's all-color western out California way. The program came to you from the studios of KNX Columbia Square.